So is Ehang a threat to Joby and Archer Aviation? Hello hustlers. In today's video we're going to investigate whether Ehang, the Chinese based eVTOL company, is a threat to Archer and Joby Aviation in the air taxi space. Before we jump in, let's celebrate our growing community. We're now at around 170 subscribers and pushing towards 200. We're on track to become the largest Archer and Joby community here on YouTube. So please, don't be lazy, hit that subscribe, and help us grow the biggest, most engaged EV talk community on the platform. I've also created a free Discord for us all to communicate and collaborate and share all the news. It's completely free to join, so let's come together and build a strong community where everyone has a voice. Whether it's good, bad or ugly, share it with me and it'll be it. We're in this together. All right. Let's get on with this video. So in this video, we'll be looking at Ehang as a business and seeing where they stand in the market today compared to Archer and Joby Aviation. So let's get right to it. With Andres Perotti from Ehang. And uh, Hi. so really quickly, so he's involved in the EV toll uh, scene uh, as a manufacturer. So maybe can you tell us a little bit about what Ehang does? Well, we basically are an eVTOL company, which is producing drones for mobility use cases. On the one hand for passenger transport, what you see here in the back, or on the other hand for logistical use cases, which we have over there. Uh, maybe we can turn the camera a bit to, to this product here, uh, or even firefighting, which we have over there in the back. So we see ourselves as a platform operator. We develop a platform for autonomous flying systems, and then we attach different uh, hardware for different use cases. So this is interesting. Ehang are also planning logistics uses for their drones. These specially modified drones will be able to deliver cargo and deliveries to precise locations at speed and also get into previously unreachable areas for uses in firefighting. This does make Ehang a little different from the other air taxis only operating companies such as Joby and Archer, but it does give them a specific edge. So I see you have actual passenger vehicles. These passenger vehicles are actually in service now, right? In Shenzhen? That's, that, that's, co that's correct. Um, our domestic market is in the People's Republic of China, as you mentioned already. And uh, we're the first company globally who is fully certified. We received the type certification by the Civil Aviation Authority of China last year in September. And now we're in the process of a commercial rollout. We have already more than 200 vehicles uh, shipped and delivered to partners, customers and operators. We start uh, with focusing on aerial sightseeing, touristical use cases, and step by step, we're moving into areas of commuting and also uh, urban environments. Wow. So that's a big deal. Like the very first company actually flying people. So now these vehicles only carry two people, which should not be useful for group traveling. As mentioned here, they want to start with sightseeing, another interesting area in the market, which is tourism. However, the use of capital here might give Archer and Joby an edge to outgrow them before they start trying to muscle their way into air taxis, as he's mentioned there is on the cards. In like drone sort of devices, that's like a basic. And I see you also have like, a, like you said, you have different applications as well. So you have your cargo vehicle, you can fly cargo right. wherever. And wow. That's, that's, and so you also mentioned, so you, you're the manufacturer, like the OEM. But uh, so you sell these different companies and they, they operate them. That's that's correct. I mean, it depends. We have different models. Um, and of course, in our domestic market, we have a different approach than internationally. One thing is very clear. If you want to scale internationally, you need to have local partners because the whole. So now this answers another question we got from one of our members, Dylan Rogers, whether they're going to be just Asia based or they're going to be a global business. As I suspected, they really are planning to go international and they have used cases to be direct competitors to Joby and Archer. The whole ecosystem, the whole value chain cannot be covered uh, by one single company. I mean, we cannot do uh, the vehicle itself, the operations and all the infrastructure and this on a uh, global scale. No company could do that. So no, I don't entirely agree with this statement. Once your business is in full flow, there should be no reason for you not to be able to vertically integrate and take on yourself to reduce costs. However, I do agree you need the backing of big companies initially, like Delta and Toyota, Backjoby, 
and United and Stellantis back Archer. So we rely on local partners here who also have the local expertise. And here in Abu Dhabi, we are very proud uh, to be partnering with Wings, which is a subsidiary of the MLG Group, uh, to expand our footprint uh, to the Middle East and uh, Abu Dhabi in specific. So what other markets are you looking at for certification next? Right. Well, we have a very clear strategy here. Um, we know that uh, on a global scale, there are two dominating regulating entities, which are much appreciated. You have the FAA in the States and the FAA also in the European area. Uh, and basically the rest was following. And now with the area of EVTOLs, we can see that uh, the Civil Aviation Authority of China got, uh, 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 got the ambition to turn from a follower to a leader. And since we got the certification, we focus now as a next step on the markets where a CSC certification could be adopted. Uh now, this is the scary thing. With certification in China, Ehang will be able to produce revenue quicker than Archer and Joby until FAA clear the vehicles. However, this might benefit Archer and Joby, as the FAA may see the competition from China as a threat and may allow certification to get streamlined. But do let me know what you think on this. Um, and then we expand into these footprints. We have identified many markets here in the Asian area, but also in LATAM, also in the Middle East um, and other areas and regions. Um, and when the business is uh, expanded there, then we will go into the certification processes in the Western Hemisphere. Okay. So for our American, for our American audience, uh, how soon do you think we could expect to see your products flying in, in America? Like roughly give it a decade really that okay. long okay so this statement completely relaxes me and blew the threat of ehang out of the water for the u.s companies as they are not planned on common for around 10 years we should have a strong foundation in joby and archer at this point and all infrastructure is secured for the two companies while hitting profitability give it a decade okay. um, but it's very difficult to estimate you know everything is moving very fast at the same time it's totally new there are still a lot of questions for everybody to be answered you know I like to compare the state of the industry of EVTOLs or flying cars as many call them uh, with the state of the car industry in the 1920s so it's here it's working we have still serial version 1.0 but are all questions of the whole ecosystem answered? No, they are not. And in the 1920s, we also did not know how parking places, uh, 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 the combination with public transport, roads and so on should work together. It's the same here. So if you, uh, if you compare this technology with autonomous driving, for example, in autonomous driving, you implement a new tech into an ecosystem which was growing over decades. And here it's about building a totally new ecosystem from scratch. So the vehicles there, a lot of other things are there, but still some things are missing. Okay. So we, we have this step-by-step -step approach. We focus on the things which are possible today and not on the things which are not possible today. But we believe that the uh, US uh, market is a more than super interesting one. We also have a strong affiliation to the US market. We are listed on NASDAQ in New York. Okay. So we already have an affiliation to the US markets and uh, we have been flying there already also. All right. Yeah, in okay. North Carolina. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah. Where, where, how does that work? It, looks, it, looks it like was it was in January uh, 2020, one month after our IPO. We IPO'd in uh, December 2019, and uh, then we had a flight under the presence of uh, the governor, okay. uh, Governor Cooper back then, um, and it was like like a showcase flight uh, together with uh, the the local FAA administration. Awesome. So, how many how many different how many different models do you have? Uh, all in all, in total, three. Okay. And uh, of, of this type of product. We, we are working uh, on another product, which is still in the uh, uh, prototyping stage. It's called the VT30. It's a fixed wing model okay. with a much higher uh, range of uh, uh, almost 300 kilometers. You wow. even can see it over there. We have it displayed here in Abu okay. Dhabi at Drift X. And it's uh, uh, the first time that you can see it outside of China. So that's, that's massive. Awesome. Um, and besides that, we're also working on, on other areas like smaller logistical drones, what you see here mm -hmm. uh, in the back. But our core uh, focus is the 216 platform uh, where we have the certifications and where we are expanding our footprint currently. So these, these products here, 
What, what is the typical range for these products? Today, uh, the range is 30 kilometers okay. and a flight time of roughly 25 minutes, so which is like 15, 20 miles, 15 miles, something 15, like something, miles. Some, something like this. Yeah. 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 Um, and, and this is mostly related to the battery technology. And right. we know from the car industry that the battery tech is improving mm -hmm. uh, month by month and year by year. So that's, that's a thing which is solving itself. And anyhow, I mean, the 216 platform, what you see here, uh, is a multi-copter platform. It's not made to uh, travel over uh, vast distances. It's more for short hops right. in regions, in cities, in urban areas. Um, and, and for that, it's absolutely uh, sufficient. Important is to have the vehicle as lean as possible, uh, because at the end of the day, it's all about the pricing. So what we are doing, and that's, that's an important message, um, the innovation what we are doing is not lying in the way how we transport people or cargo from A to B. We have this since decades and it's called helicopter. Right. The innovation is we make the functional principle of a helicopter affordable for a much wider uh, scale of people. Right. And uh, this is also the social ambition we are, we, are, we are having here. And at the same time, we tackle pain points like sustainability issues by going electric, but also uh, noise issues uh, uh, by having, having electrical engines, which actually reach uh, a noise level of roughly 72 decibel. Even a vacuum cleaner is louder, so. So overall, I think Ehang is a very interesting company and a standalone in its own right. I do think they'll dominate Asia and will get some nice returns for investors. In relation to Joby and Archer as direct competition, I'm not too worried in the short term due to Ehang not being too aggressive than in the US for the next 10 years and also the vehicle size. Even though it was mentioned they're making bigger vehicles, but I would love to know your thoughts on this. Should Joby and Archer be worried about Ehang Aviation? All right, guys, help me break that 200 subscriber mark and let's grow the most honest eVTOL community here on YouTube. And oh yeah, a Discord is listed below to stay up to date. All right, hustlers, peace out.